finding your comfortable seat, whatever that is for you, and start to bring yourself into your space. Let those eyes fall closed. Start to really pull that awareness inward, letting go of the day, letting go of whatever you had going on, forgetting about anything that you might need to do later. For this next hour, it's just us, just here and just now. Letting the shoulders soften down away from the ears, the shoulder blades slide down the back. Imagine that little thread connected to the crown of the head, setting you up just a little bit taller than usual. Then noticing the breath, not to control it, but to gauge your baseline. How are you arriving today? Then starting to soften through the rib cage and let the diaphragm drop. Let those inhales start to fill the whole chest space, the whole belly space, each breath a little bit deeper and a little bit longer than the one before. Now check the tummy from time to time, make sure it's actually soft, rising with the inhales, lowering with the exhales. For this next minute or so, we're just gonna breathe. When the mind starts to wander, bring it back to the sensation of the breath. Check that tummy. And taking the biggest, deepest breath of the day, filling the whole chest space, the whole belly space, then through the mouth with a sigh, exhale completely all the way to the bottom. And inhale the arms, out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Inhaling out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Last time, inhaling out and up. This time when the palms come to touch, interlace fingers, flip those palms, press the ceiling away. Big inhale. Exhale, tip right. Inhale, center. You might even kick on that ujjayi breath if you want to. Exhaling left. Inhaling center. Dropping the right arm down. Exhale. Take your time. Keeping that left sit bone glued to the ground. Active reach through those fingers. No bend in the elbow if you can avoid it. Think about keeping that armpit open, so not rolling forward with the shoulder, but try and roll it back just a little bit. And engage the core. Inhale back to center. Exhale left. Keeping that right sit bone glued to the ground. Active reach through those fingers. Shoulder rolling back. Armpit open. And engage the core, inhaling back to center. And exhale, float those arms down. 
All right, we're gonna do just a, a couple of little forward stretches. Everybody looks like you've got the legs crossed pretty much. So we're just gonna bring the fingers to the mat however your legs are and walk yourself forward. Just a nice gentle hip stretch. And gently pressing yourself back up. Switch those legs. So whichever one was in the front, bring it back. Bring the back forward. Walk yourself down. Gently pressing yourself up. All right. Pointing the left knee forward, stepping the right foot across. Tuck those heels in if you like it. Right fingers behind, left arm to that right thigh. Inhale, sit tall. Then exhale, twist with the belly first. Then the ribs, the shoulders, and finally the gaze. The length of the spine is the most important thing here. Anytime you go into a twist, you really need that length. Now, if you want to, you can extend that left arm, reaching for that left big toe. Notice the breath here. Try to find space. And big inhale, exhale, return that gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. Switch those knees. Left hand behind, right arm, left thigh, inhale, sit tall as long as that spine will go. Exhale, twist with the belly first, and then the ribs, the shoulders, and finally the gaze. Thinking about growing taller with each inhale, twisting a little bit deeper with each exhale. Option to reach for that right big toe. And big inhale, exhale, return the gaze to center, followed by the rest of the body. Headed for your tabletop, roll over those knees if it works. Otherwise, kick the feet out to the side. Now we're gonna go straight into our cat pose. So press that ground away, tuck the tailbone, gaze drops to the navel. Really think about what's going on in the core here. Lift it towards the spine. Dome the belly towards the spine. Beautiful cow pose. Inhale. Let that belly drop. Tailbone lift. Gaze gently lift. Now swing in the torso right. Up into cat pose. Exhale. Swing it left. Down into cow pose. Inhale. Keep that circle moving. Soften through the shoulders, soften through the hips, find all of the tight and sore spots. Connect with your body. It'll ask for what it wants. Switching directions whenever you're ready. All right, bringing that spine back to neutral. Now we're gonna bring those hips left and back, so back towards that left heel. Then we're gonna bring them to the right and forward. 
to the left, and back, to the right, and forward, just finding that nice circular motion. Be gentle with yourself. If you're finding a lot of catches, be a little bit less aggressive. Switching directions. And returning to neutral. One more big inhale. And exhale, sit back to your child's pose. Bring those hips down to the heels. Knees can be together or apart, whichever you prefer. Resting that forehead on the floor. Now think about really letting it all go here. Release as many of those muscles as you can. Take this moment and scan through the body. Notice places where you may be unconsciously holding tension. Could be the shoulders, the traps, those little muscles around the eyes and the face. Maybe you've been walking around with your jaw clenched, your tongue plastered to the roof of your mouth. Try to let it go. Now keeping the head low, gently walking those hands to the right, giving a nice stretch through that left side rib cage, through that left side armpit. Gently walking yourself back through center, then all the way left. Big stretch in that right side. Gently walking back to center, taking just another moment in this child's pose. And inhale, shifting forward to your tabletop. Find those wrists under the shoulders, those knees under the hips. Extending through those right fingers, pressing back through that left heel, bird dog pose. Find that stability in the core. Keeping yourself as still, as stable as possible. Notice what happens to the mind when the body gets still. And big inhale. Knee to elbow exhale, nice and slow, like you're moving through water. Inhale, stretch it long, nice and slow and controlled. Beautiful, guys. Knee to elbow exhale. Inhale long. Now this next time, think about really doming the belly when you tuck that knee in. Knee to elbow, exhale. Dome that belly, lift it towards the spine. Beautiful. Inhale long. Two more. 
Knee to elbow, exhale. Doming that tummy. Inhale long. Nice and slow and controlled. All right, last one. Knee to elbow, exhale. Now pull it in as tight as you can. Get that knee right up into your chest if you can. Maybe it's close to your armpit. We're gonna hold it here for 10, nine. Find that stillness, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale long, nice and slow and controlled. And exhale, set it down. Well done. Reaching those left fingers forward, pressing back through that right heel. Find that core, that stability. Beautiful, big inhale. Knee to elbow, exhale, nice and slow and controlled. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. Think about the tummy, doming that tummy towards the spine. Inhale long. Knee to elbow, exhale. Inhale long, just two more. Knee to elbow, exhale. Really doming that tummy. Inhale long. Last one. Knee to elbow, exhale. Maybe even pull it up towards the armpit as tight as you can to the chest. We're gonna hold it here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale long and exhale, set it down. Nice, sitting back for a little child's pose. Throw those arms behind you if you'd like to let those shoulders relax. Maybe take this moment to roll out those wrists, get them ready for the upcoming down dogs. All right, reaching those arms way out front. Spread those fingers, plant those palms at least shoulder width apart, a little bit wider is better. Tuck the toes under, lifting the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Now take a moment, settle in, pedal out the heels, maybe shift hips from side to side. Whatever feels good here. Don't worry too much about your alignment at first, but we'll get to it in a second. All right, starting to notice that alignment. Trying to get those hips in line with the shoulders, in line with the wrists, one nice straight line. Make sure those fingers are nice and spread. If you have skin bunching up on the back side of your wrist, your shoulders are probably too far forward. Bring them back farther if you can.
Now we're not going to be in down dog a ton through this class, but we are going to be here for a little while now. So try to hang in there. Try not to, not to bail out. You can make it. Take a look at the orientation of your hands. Make sure that either that middle finger or that first finger or the space in between is pointing forward. Notice that core, nice and lifted. Think about what the belly of a dog looks like when they're in this down dog, right? That low belly is all sucked in. Use that ujjayi breath. Beautiful, all right. Look in between those hands, walk those feet forward. Inhale to a halfway lift when you get there. Heart lifted, tailbone lifted. Then exhale, folding forward. Making sure it's from the hips, not from a rounding of the spine. It's also totally okay to have a bend in the knees here. All right, ragdoll pose if you'd like it. Bring those elbows and the hands, a gentle rock from side to side. Let that head hang. Feel that traction in your spine, in your neck. In a past life, I managed a chiropractic clinic and we would charge 25 bucks for um, for cervical traction, which is just pulling on your head. <laughs> Let the weight of your head give you an adjustment. Oh, that feels good. All right, now if anybody is feeling extra stretchy already, feel free to bring the palms of the hands under the feet, bending those elbows out to the sides, gorilla pose. While you're here, you might even use those toes to massage the wrists. And if gorilla pose is not in the cards today, don't worry about it. Hang out in that rag doll. All right, pulling those hands out, putting a little bend in those knees, engaging the core, thinking reverse swan dive as you inhale, rise. All right, kicking on that ujjayi breath, sun stretches, inhale. Forward fold, exhale, ocean sounding breath. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. Connect to your breath. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Inhale, rise. All right, we're going to take one more, but take it at your own pace. We'll meet back at the top. Connect to your breath. Ah, 
Wow. We're all almost right on time. Cool. All right. Surya Namaskar A. We're going to do two in a row without a break, but that's going to be the extent of our massive exertion today. So hang in there. It's not that bad. Big inhale. Forward fold, exhale. Heart lifted, tailbone lifted on the way down. Inhale to a half. We lift. Chaturanga, exhale, plant those hands, hop or walk those feet back, bend those elbows to a 90. Now don't blow through your chaturanga here. Good job, shift forward, press the ground away, inhale, up dog or cobra. Lifting the hips up and back, exhale, downward facing dog. Looking between the hands, hopping or walking forward. Inhaling to a halfway lift, exhaling forward, fold, and inhale, rise. Adding that back bend if you like. Forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, inhale. Chaturanga, exhale. Good. Shift forward, press the ground away, inhale. And lifting those hips up and back. Exhale, down dog. Taking a few breaths here. Notice that alignment. Find that openness through the armpits. All right. Looking between the hands, we're going to step the right foot forward. Then pivot that left heel down so that back foot is parallel to the back edge of the mat. Front knee is basically over the ankle or a little bit behind, then cartwheeling up to warrior two. Once you're there, take a moment, settle into your position. Thinking about having the hips parallel-ish to the side of the mat, back foot parallel to the back edge, front toes straight forward, knee basically over the ankle or a little bit behind. Now something that happens here a lot, that front knee will cave in towards the center. Take a look down, see if that's happening. For a lot of people, you need to really engage through that outer thigh to pull that knee out to be in line with the hip. Beautiful. So the gaze here is down that right arm, across that middle fingertip. Flipping that front palm, reaching forward, big inhale. Exhale, sweep back through your space, reverse warrior. Now that left hand can trace down that left leg for support. You could reach the hand around the back if you want to, reaching for that right thigh, or if you just want to bring the back of the hand to the low back, that's cool too. So in yoga, the goal really is to find ease in these poses. So when your body's in this crazy shape, going through some crazy stuff, we still have that ability to control how we process it, to control how we perceive it. Beautiful. Inhaling back, warrior two. Exhaling into supported side angle, bringing that right arm down to that right thigh. Now we're gonna go for an extended side angle today. So we're gonna sweep this arm back and reach it forward, trying to get a straight line from the heel through to the fingers. Reach it away. Beautiful, okay. Now if you want to, and if your body, you know, body willing, feel free to reach those right fingers for the floor. Now don't do it if your right hip pops out and your left shoulder folds forward when you do it. If you're close but not quite there, feel free to use a block. 
The alignment is important. Beautiful. Okay, we're gonna bring those left fingers down. We're gonna come up on those back toes. I know, it's weird. We're gonna reach the right fingers forward, so we're about maybe two hands in front of the foot and one hand to the right. Then we're gonna press forward, lifting that left leg, and then eventually stacking that left hip on top of the right, opening up into Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. Find that stillness. And that left hip is really intended to be on top of that right hip. So you might need the sensation of pulling the right hip forward and rolling that left hip back at the same time to get there. Okay, we're gonna head from here straight back to warrior two. So we're gonna put a bend in that front knee, bring that foot down, cartwheeling up, warrior two. How did that go? Not too bad, not too bad. Good, yeah. All right, we're gonna extend that front knee. Last chance to check those hips, get them as square as you can. Reaching, 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 totally sideways here. There's no forward bend at all. Imagine you're against a wall. Once you're fully stretched, tip to the side, triangle pose. Now again, think about keeping the right hip tucked under that left hip, rolling back. Blocks are great here. You can have your hand on your leg maybe on your thigh even. Now on the other hand, if you're finding this to be pretty fairly okay and you're getting your palm to the floor, go ahead and move your hand to the back side of your leg. Make sure to roll that left shoulder back, keeping the shoulders stacked one on top of the other. Hang in there, you're doing good. All right, now putting a bend in that front knee, cartwheeling back warrior two, cartwheeling down, coming up on the back toes, stepping the front foot back, chaturanga. Shifting forward, press the ground away, inhale, up dog or cobra. Lifting the hips up and back, exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a few breaths here. All right, look in between the hands, step that left foot forward. Right heel pivots down so that back foot's parallel with the back edge of the mat. Front knee is basically over the ankle or a little bit behind. Cart wheeling up, warrior two. Now the correct alignment here is to have your heel in line with the arch of your foot. So if you have the body proportions, that would be your goal. Now, if that is uncomfortable, if that puts maybe pressure in the knees, feel free to adjust as much as you need to, right? Goals are, goals are nice, but they're not even necessarily good for everyone. Use your own best judgment with your body. Can you guys hear that? 
Quédate en casa. <laughs> and flipping that front palm, reaching forward, big inhale. Exhale, sweep back through your space, reverse warrior. Notice what's going on with that front knee. If it's kind of bailing in towards the center, press that sucker out. Beautiful. If you want to wrap that right arm around the back, reaching for that left thigh, go for it. Find your stillness. Find your ease. And inhaling back, warrior two. Exhaling into that supported side angle. Then sweeping those fingers back, extending. Body willing, reach that left palm for the floor. Otherwise, stay supported. It's totally okay to stay supported here. Left hip tucking under, right hip rolling back. Right shoulder pulled back, stacked on top of the left. Beautiful, all right. Sweeping those right fingers down, coming up on those back toes, reaching forward with that left hand, about, a, about two feet if you can get it, and then one to the left. Pressing forward, bringing that back leg up. Feel free to use a block here too, totally okay. Then try to stack that right hip on top of the left. Opening up Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Now, if your left hip is sagging down here, if it's not thoroughly engaged, you're gonna be kind of crumpling forward and probably kind of shaky. Really engage through that bottom hip. Lift with that hip. <laughs> awesome. All right, we're headed back for our warrior two. Gentle bend in that front knee, bring that back foot down. Cart wheeling up. Ah, cart wheeling the arms down, coming up on those back toes. Stepping that front foot back, chaturanga. Shifting forward, press the ground away, inhale. Up dog or cobra. Lifting those hips up and back, exhale downward facing dog. Taking a few breaths here. Notice your alignment. Hips in line with shoulders, in line with wrists. Katie, your alignment is looking awesome. So much improvement. <laughs> you still need both hands though. <laughs> All right, guys. Look in between the hands, hop or walk those feet forward. Inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale to a forward fold. And inhale, rise. All right. Stay standing. Just exhale those arms down. A little bit of balance. Gosh, we only have 15 minutes left. Amazing. I need like another 40, so we'll have to pack it in. No. <laughs> All right, finding your balance on that left foot, bringing that right foot into your version of tree pose.
Yeah, could be on the ankle, on the calf or on the thigh. Avoid the knee. If there's anything you want to do with the arms, go for it. <laughs> Kim is perfectly in sync again. I wonder if I could too. <laughs> no, <Nope>, I'm backwards. <laughs> All right, now you're welcome to stay here in tree pose or lift that right knee. We're gonna reach for that uh, big toe with the peace fingers. And maybe this is it. Maybe this is where you wanna stay and that's totally fine. This is a good stretch, it's legit, right? Otherwise, extend that leg out in front. And if that feels okay, swing it out to the side. Now, Cynthia, you asked a question about this pose um, in the, the last class we had together about whether the hip should be opened or not. And um, I have been a really bad example in this pose for a long time because I, I like the feeling of opening the hip. So if you want to open your hip, go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. I think it's healthy and, and feels fine. But as a teacher, I'm gonna start doing it this way just because it's a better example. All right, put a bend in that knee, bring it back to center, let that foot come down. Spreading those right toes, get your grip on the floor, bringing that left foot into your version of tree pose. <laughs> Anything you wanna do with the arms, go for it. <laughs> what was that on your head, Katie? Was it a sock? <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Lifting that left knee, if you want to, you can stay in your tree pose too. Reaching for that left big toe. And this is a great pose just in itself. If this is where you need to stay, don't feel bad about it. It is a legit pose. You can, if you want to, extend the leg forward and then swing it out to the side. There's a real challenge for me not to open my hip. <laughs> Beautiful, put a bend in that knee, bring it back to center, good job, Katie, and let it go. All right, grab a block if you have one handy. Uh, we're gonna go straight into some relaxation because we just don't have the time for a whole lot more. So go ahead and lie back. And we're gonna go into uh, Viparita Karani, so lifting those legs up, bring that block just under your hips, Ah, instant relaxation. If you don't have a block, no big deal. You can just stack your hands underneath your hips. It'll serve the same purpose. Ah, immediately takes all the stress off of the heart.
All right. So I'm going to offer up a pose that is potentially dangerous, and you need to make the best decision for you. Okay. So the pose is halasana or plow pose, and the reason it's dangerous potentially is because it increases the pressure inside your skull a lot. If you have um, something that's ready to to burst, uh, it you know this is where it would burst. So. So this is where a stroke could potentially happen or something like that. If you have high blood pressure, you don't want to do this. If you have glaucoma, you don't want to do this. Okay. So if you have any of those pressure type issues, uh, just go ahead and stay in your legs up. Otherwise, oh, one last thing. Once there's pressure on the neck, do not look around. Pick a spot on your ceiling. Keep your gaze there until you're back in legs up pose. Okay. All right, so now stay here if it's the right choice for you. Otherwise, bring those hands down to the mat beside you and then lifting those hips, bringing those feet overhead, bringing the toes to touch the floor behind you. Now be aware and respect, respectful of any sensations that you feel here. If you feel anything weird in the neck or head come out, All right, soften those knees, gently start to roll those hips down. All right, bring the knees in, give them a, a squeeze them in towards the chest and pull that block out if you can. We're gonna do just a little happy baby pose. So let the bottoms of the feet point to the ceiling, the knees fall out to the sides, a little bit of a rock from side to side. And bring those knees in for a big squeeze, a big inhale, and exhale, drop them right, keeping that left shoulder down if it'll stay. <sighs> Starting to let it all go, intentionally letting the core soften. Gently bringing those knees back to center. Give them another big squeeze. Another big inhale. And exhale, let them fall left. Keeping the right shoulder down if it'll stay there. Gazing to the right hand if it's comfortable on your neck. If it's not comfortable, don't worry about it. You can look straight up or even to the left if you want to.
Gently bringing those knees back to center. Now, if there's any other movements that your body wants, take it now. Maybe a windshield wiper, maybe a happy baby. Maybe you just want to squeeze those knees for an extra long time. All right. Bring those knees in for a big squeeze. A big inhale. And exhale. Extend into your Shavasana. Now take a moment and make yourself perfectly comfortable, whatever that takes. If you want to grab a pillow or a blanket, close the blinds, turn off the light, whatever it might be. Maybe tucking under shoulder blades, maybe lifting the head, tucking the chin, and then laying that long neck down. Pulling that chin towards the chest turns on the parasympathetic nervous system, puts you into that state of relaxation just a bit easier. Now relaxing the forehead. Relaxing the eyebrows. All of those little muscles around the eyes, relax them, let them go. Softening the cheeks. Letting them melt down towards the ears. Relaxing the jaw. Letting the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. With each exhale, feeling your body pressing heavier and heavier into your mat. With each exhale, falling deeper and deeper into relaxation. For these next, oh, three minutes or so, just relax.
Now starting to bring your awareness back into your body. Maybe wiggling some fingers, maybe wiggling some toes. Maybe reaching arms overhead for a big full body stretch. And when you're ready, rolling onto whichever side is the most comfortable for you, savoring these last few moments of relaxation. Then using as little effort as possible, gently press yourself up to a comfortable seat, keeping those eyes closed or lowered. Now take a moment, feel into the body, notice what's changed. And let's take just a second to make sure that we're still relaxed, relaxed through the shoulders, relaxed through the core, faces soft. There we are. And inhaling the arms out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down through heart center. Inhaling out and up. See yourself grabbing your big hand full of divine energy. Exhale, pull it down to heart center. Feel that warmth. See the glow. Last time, inhaling out and up. Bringing palms to touch. Exhaling down to the third eye for the mind. To heart center for the body and spirit. Namaste. Well, that was fun. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. I had a great time. I hope you did too. So tomorrow is the fire and ice practice. Oh, holy moly. If you have the time, if you're not signed up already, join us. It's, it's a hoot. Have a great night, guys. Bye.